Today, we're revisiting my method for disabling S mode without a Microsoft account. It seems like I wasn't really clear on a few things in my last video, and it's caused some confusion for some people. So hopefully, today we can clear that up. Stay tuned. So if you've been following this channel for a while, then you may know that I absolutely refuse to create a Microsoft account. My reasoning for this isn't all that complex. I just don't want to. And Microsoft accounts also make it a lot harder for technicians like me to do my job. But if you have no problem creating a Microsoft account, then this video probably isn't for you. Because if you have a Microsoft account, all you have to do is just turn off S mode. But if you're like me and you don't want to create one, I'm going to show you how to turn off S mode without one. But first, I got to pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So this is gonna be the second time I'm making this video and my method ironically hasn't changed. The original method still works great. Unfortunately though, it doesn't work on all computers and because of that, it's created some confusion down in the comments below. The old method for disabling S mode was simply turning off secure boot in the BIOS. Now, I mentioned this in the last video, but I guess many people must have skipped ahead, so must have missed that part. Because I get a ton of comments saying that this method doesn't work. I even pinned a comment in the last video talking about this problem, but it seems like no one really reads the pinned comments either. So, in this video, I'm going to cover both methods of disabling S mode without a Microsoft account. For the first method, I'm gonna be using this mini PC right here because it requires going into the BIOS. And here's the thing, if you have a system that's running S mode, you're not gonna have an ASUS motherboard like my computer here. So it's completely pointless showing you how to turn off secure boot on an ASUS motherboard because you're never gonna find a computer like that with S mode enabled. So this mini PC right here has a BIOS that's similar to what you could find on many cookie cutter systems that would come with S mode enabled. Now, before we do that though, the first thing that we have to do is actually get into the BIOS. Unfortunately, this isn't a standard and all different manufacturers do it a little bit differently. Well, technically there is a standard and that's the delete button, but unfortunately most computer manufacturers don't actually follow the standard. Either way, you're going to have to hit a specific button combination on your keyboard right after you hit the power button when you can first see the computer's post screen. And like I just mentioned before, the standard is the delete button, but if that one doesn't work, then you can also try a few other ones. Like for instance, on Dell systems, you have to hit F2. And if you're on an HP, you can either hit F10 or hit the escape key until you see the startup menu, and from there you can hit F10. When I'm working on an HP, I typically use the escape key because I often can't remember the function key for each thing within the startup menu. And just hitting escape will show you the whole option. Finally, if you're on an Acer notebook, you should be able to get into the BIOS by using the F2 key. But if you're on an Acer desktop, then you'll have to use the delete key. I'm not sure why it's different, but Acer really likes to make things complicated. Just try buying parts for one. It's not fun. But either way, those are the ones that I know off the top of my head. And unfortunately, if you have a system other than a Dell, HP, or Acer, then you can try one of those key combinations or just Google your specific computer and find out how you get into the BIOS. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one hooked up and I'll meet you in the BIOS. 
Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Now for this little mini PC, I just hit delete to get into the BIOS. So it is following the standard on this one. And that's the one I would typically try first, but if it doesn't work, then you'll have to figure out how to get into the BIOS on your specific computer. You should be able to find a web page that'll show you how to do it. But otherwise, once you get into the BIOS, the first thing that I typically look for is the boot section. That would be right here. And you essentially go through and see if you can find secure boot anywhere. Now, obviously on here, I don't see secure boot anywhere inside this section. So where I would go next is over to the security tab right here. And if you go down, there you go. You can see the secure boot section. So all you gotta do is hit enter, and then this will allow you to enable or disable secure boot. Now, when it comes to different BIOSes, this is typically how they're organized. If you can't find it in the boot section, then usually you can find it in a security section. Now, your BIOS might look different than this, but hopefully you'll still be able to figure out how to either enable or disable it just from looking at those different sections. So to disable it on this computer, as you can see right now, it's currently enabled. I just hit enter, go to disabled. And then at that point I can hit save changes and exit. And then as soon as I hit yes to save configuration, it's gonna reboot the computer. Now on some systems, you won't quite be done yet. On mine, all you have to do is disable secure boot and that's it. However, on most systems, there's a challenge that you have to answer in order to disable secure boot. Essentially, you'll see a screen that comes up that asks you to enter a series of numbers and then hit enter in order to finish disabling secure boot. This is a BIOS CAPTCHA that makes it harder for secure boot to be turned off without your knowledge. So go ahead and enter that series of numbers and then hit enter and finish booting into Windows. At this point, go into settings, click on system, and then scroll down to the bottom and click on the about page. And from here, you'll be able to see if your computer Computer's still in S mode. And if it's no longer in S mode, then go ahead and reboot your computer back into the BIOS and re-enable secure boot. And you're done. As long as S mode is disabled, then it won't re-enable itself if you turn secure boot back on. Unfortunately though, if that didn't work, if your system is still in S mode, then there's one more method we can try. So go ahead and leave secure boot turned off for the moment, and then we'll move on to the next step. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this mini PC out and hook my system back up and I'll meet you in Windows and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so here we are in Windows 11. And as you can see, if we go into the start button here, we go into settings and we're gonna go into system. We're gonna scroll down and click on about. And as you can see, we are in fact currently running in S mode. Now officially S mode only comes on Windows Home Edition PCs. The reason why my system has Windows 11 Pro in S mode is because I use this method in the reverse in order to enable Windows S mode. Unfortunately though, once it's enabled, you can't open RegEdit to disable it because unfortunately you can't use RegEdit in S mode with S mode enabled. As it turns out, you can't use OBS Studio to do screen capture either. So luckily I have an external recorder that I can use in order to film this video. So let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to turn it off. But one of the downsides to running in S mode is that you can't run any third party programs. Like for instance, if I click on Chrome right here, you can see for security and performance, this mode of Windows only runs Microsoft verified apps. Now you can click right here on this little link right here and it'll open the Microsoft store. And then from the Microsoft store where it says switch out of S mode, all you gotta do is hit get. But you need to sign up for a Microsoft account in order to do it. And like I said, I don't want a Microsoft account. So I'm gonna show you how to get out of S mode without having to deal with a Microsoft account. And for that, it's relatively simple. So from our settings menu right here, what we're gonna to have to do is click on system. And then from system, we wanna click down on recovery. Then from recovery, we wanna to go to advanced startup. And then, and once you hit that, it'll come up with a prompt telling you to save your work because obviously that's to restart your computer. So go ahead and hit restart now, and it should restart into recovery. At this point, your system's gonna reboot into recovery. Now, depending on the speed of your system, it might take a second, but once it's in recovery, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so once you're in recovery, you're gonna be on this screen right here. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we wanna click right here where it says troubleshoot. So go ahead and click troubleshoot. And then from the next step, we wanna click on advanced options. And then from advanced options, we wanna go right down here where it says command prompt and go ahead and click that. Now, 
On some systems, it may ask you for user credentials, but chances are it's not going to. If you just set this system up, if you did enter a password, then it's probably gonna ask you for that password. If you didn't, then it'll just give you the command prompt like it did right here with me. Now, once you get to your command prompt, all you wanna do is type in regedit and then hit enter, and it'll go ahead and open up your registry editor. And then from here, you wanna go ahead and click on the local machine right here. And essentially what we're gonna be doing is this local machine is the recovery local machine, if that makes any sense. What we want to do is we want to open the hive for the actual system that we're going to be using because otherwise it would make no sense to edit the registry in the recovery environment, not for Windows itself. So to do that, what we want to do is go ahead and click on, make sure you have highlighted the local machine and then click on file and then click on load hive. And then from here, we want to go to, obviously you can see right now we're in the X drive in system 32. That's it's not the system 32 we want. We want to go to the C drive. And then from C drive, you want to go ahead and go into Windows and then go down into system 32 right down here. And then from system 32, you want to go into config right here. And then from config, you're looking for a file called system right here. This is the registry hive for the system itself. So go ahead and highlight that and click open. Now it's gonna want you to name this hive. Now what I would do is just name it offline system and then go ahead and hit okay. And it will go ahead and load offline system right into the local machine subcategory in your reg edit here. So once you open that up, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to current control set 001. Now, if you don't have 001 and it just says current control set, then that's the one you wanna go into. Otherwise, you wanna go into 001. And then from here, you wanna go into control. And then from control, you wanna scroll down until you find CI right here and go ahead and open that up. And then from there, you wanna click on policy. Now, on these right here, there's three different registry keys here. You have your E-mode policy required, you have your SKU policy required, and you have verified and reputable policy state. Now, on systems that I have disabled S-mode in the past on, this last one wasn't here. So you should be able to just to disregard that one. The only one we're really gonna concern ourselves with is this SKU policy required. And your settings should be one if S-mode is enabled on your computer. So what you're gonna wanna do is just go ahead and open this up and change this to from one to zero and then go ahead and hit okay. And then at that point, what we're gonna to wanna to do is that's essentially all we have to change inside of the registry. However, there's one more important step that we have to do because right now this hasn't actually been written to the registry's flat file. And to do that, all you have to do is scroll up, highlight your offline system again. You gotta make sure to highlight this key, go up to file and hit unload hive. And at that point, go ahead and hit yes, and it'll unload that hive from your system. And then from here, we can go ahead and close this. We can close our command prompt and we can turn off the PC or reboot the PC. Now, if you did everything exactly how I showed you, then S mode should be disabled. So let's jump back on the system and see if it worked. Okay. So from here, all you got to do is go ahead and click on start click settings, and then from settings, we wanna to go to system, scroll down into about, and as you can see, now we are officially in Windows 11 Pro without S mode. And you should notice that you should still be able to now open up all your different apps. At this point, as long as S mode is disabled, you can go ahead and go back into the BIOS and re-enable Secure Boot. Once you disable S mode, you can always turn Secure Boot back on and it won't re-enable S mode. But I would definitely go through all of these processes with secure boot turned off because some people had to do both in order to get S mode to turn off. So for whatever reason, if you want to enable S mode on your system, like I did for this video, just go ahead and do what I did in reverse. Luckily to enable S mode, you can just do it from reg edit from within windows. But if you enable it on your system, you won't be able to turn it off unless you go through and follow this method again. Now, there's many reasons why you might want to enable S mode. You might have a family member that you support that keeps messing their computer up. S mode is a great way to stop third party applications from running on your system. So it might help quit getting late night support calls or it could actually increase those late night support calls because no third party programs work. 
but you know, that's on you. You might also be a really bad friend that plays lots of practical jokes. This would be a really, really mean one, by the way. If you do this to one of your friends, make sure to leave them a link to this video. That is, if they can open their browser to watch it, man, just, you know what? Maybe you just shouldn't do this to your friends. You might not have any friends very long if you do. Now, one problem that you might run into is Windows 11 requires you to create a Microsoft account in order to even finish the installation. If you don't want to create a Microsoft account, then that kind of makes things a little bit difficult. Now, there are workarounds to get around the Microsoft account requirement, but unfortunately, those workarounds don't work if S mode is enabled, and you can't disable S mode until you get logged onto your system. Luckily, there's a way around this also. What I would do is go ahead and find yourself a copy of Windows 11 22H2 and just reload the system with it. Chances are the computer came with a bunch of junk on it anyway and reloading it would make it run better right out of the box. Then when you're running Windows 11 22H2, you can use the old workarounds to get around the Microsoft account requirements. Most of these should work with S mode enabled. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to that video right here. But unfortunately, to use those workarounds, you have to be running Windows 11 22H2. But once you get S mode disabled, you can upgrade your system to a current version of Windows 11. As always, you guys have a great day.